You're watching 10 Eyewitness News returning now to tonight's top story and the lone wolf terrorist who sent fear through the streets of London during a deadly rampage. He drove onto a crowded footpath killing four people and injuring 40 others including an Australian. Amber Austin Wright is at Westminster. Amber, what's the latest? Well, Georgie, it's a sombre mood here in London, but people are starting to head to work and school. The Prime Minister, Theresa May, made it very clear that she wants London to return to business as usual today. So Parliament will resume, but parts of Westminster do remain a crime scene. Uh, Londoners are trying their best to, to get back on their feet so soon after this attack, but it really has punctuated the threat of terrorism in Europe. London is in shock, but it's no stranger to the trauma of terror from sustained IRA attacks to the suicide bombings on underground trains. Memories remain painfully vivid, especially for Australian Jill Hicks, who survived this in 2005. And today, her heart was back in London. In times of, of great despair, it's, it's humanity that keeps shining its light. And, we, and I think we... We've got to keep talking about that. Despair returned to the city when a British Army soldier was beheaded near his barracks in 2013 and two years later, a man went on a stabbing frenzy at a tube station shouting, this is for Syria. It's a year to the day since suicide bombers killed 32 people in Brussels. It was sombre and silent at the airport today during this anniversary. The city remains on high alert. Marlene Bjork, a member of the European Parliament, was in the arrivals lounge at the time of the explosions. It's about the kind of fear that I felt and that I can still remember uh, um, in, my, in my body. It's, I don't think we should accept at all to learn to live with that. France too has been shattered by sustained attacks over recent years, turning the lights off at the Eiffel Tower today in solidarity with London. In 2015, suicide bombers struck outside a Paris stadium during a football match, followed by several mass shootings, including at the Bataclan Theatre, which killed 130 people. In 2016, a cargo truck was deliberately driven into crowds celebrating Bastille Day in Nice, taking the lives of 86 people. And an already deadly year was capped off with yet more misery when a truck was driven into a Christmas market in Berlin, killing 12. Now, as bloodshed returns to the streets of London, people here fear it won't be the last. Now, as terrible as this attack is, people on the streets have told us that they were prepared for worse. Authorities are working around the clock to stop these kind of attacks from happening, but they say because of the nature of terrorism, not all can be foiled. Thank you for the update. Amber Austin-Wright.